Yes. And first, what are the general elections? The general elections. Can you name the last five Prime Minister? The one. David Cameron. Gordon Brown. And then. Oh my god. So. She's laughing. Yeah, that one. Margaret Thatcher. Um, John Major. <laughs> Are you aware uh, of when you were looking for a book? How do you feel about that? Was it the four weeks? They are an opportunity for people to vote in to their area or their ward, a particular councillor or um, a particular councillor for a particular party. Right. Could be some like the Greens or Conservatives or Labour or um, whoever, uh, or it could be an independent councillor as well. It doesn't have to necessarily be a political party. And then what happens is everyone gets seats, and then someone eventually with the most seats. Mm -hmm is voted in as Prime Minister of the country. Who was the Prime Minister during the Second World War? Winston Churchill. Can you name the last five Prime Ministers? Uh, we have David Cameron. Yeah. Who's current now? Gordon Brown, briefly. Yeah. Tony Blair. Yeah. He was in for th three terms. Yeah. And then we had John Major, he was a Tory, yeah. and then Margaret Thatcher. Also mm -hmm. uh, are you aware of when women were given for and how do you feel about that? Uh, I couldn't tell you the exact date, mm -hmm. which is terrible. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but I know um, a lot of people or a lot of women um, fought very hard for their right to vote. I've heard of Emil Pankhurst, and obviously, yeah, women absolutely should have the vote. Um, and something that's very important for democracy and, and for, for women's rights and human rights um, in general. All right. And when are the elections held? Well, we've got one coming up, haven't we? Mm. Uh, so it's May-ish, May, every five years. Yeah. When was the vote, vote given to age of 18 and how do you feel about that? Do you know what? Mm. I don't actually know mm. the exact date for that, mm. Mm. but I feel like it's very important that young people get a vote because young people have issues that just affect them, and yeah. if they don't have a voice, how can they affect change in, in that particular area? So it's crucial. How do you think that 16 years or why? Mm. 
16 year olds, I think, potentially, I'm not 100% sure, no. I'm not 100% sure. The reason I say that is because I think we don't do enough in schools and colleges yeah. about politics oh, to enable young people maybe to make an informed decision. But in these days, everyone has the internet and could probably research for themselves. Yeah. It's whether or not young people would be motivated to do that. I don't know. It's getting people engaged, isn't it? Young people engaged in politics. Okay. What is the most significant issue for the political team? Ooh. Well, the media seem to be focusing on things like, or solely on actually, the um, deficit, so the financial troubles of the country. That seems to be what the, the, what the government and the media are peddling as the most pressing, pressing issue, although both parties seem to be disagreeing about whether it's as bad as they say it is, and whether we need to cut as deep as we do in terms of cutting certain public services, and that's where there seems to be a bit of a, that's what they're sort of clashing over at the minute in terms of the general election. Alright, and as a staff, what, is the, what influence you particularly towards the politician as a staff especially for you? Uh, honesty, I think is the, is the only thing really, someone who's completely, or I, who I feel is transparent and that they're not just peddling a load of lies to make you vote for them. Mm -hmm. Are you talking as a education or everything? Everything. Because so I think I don't. I would never vote for a politician who I felt was just saying stuff yeah. to make you vote for them. Yeah. So it would have to be somebody who you felt what they were saying was true. I don't know whether or not I feel like any of the politicians are. Yeah. And I think that's probably why. Um, certainly for me, I would be what you would call a floating voter. So someone who's not decided on. Yeah who they're going to vote for in the general election. I think my part of my problem is I've not quite decided yet who I feel is the most honest of the politicians or the parties to vote for. All right, if you don't if you don't vote, will you complain to the political politicians? Uh, could I complain about politicians? Would I complain about politicians. them if I don't vote? Mm. I would definitely vote even if I don't vote for one of the main parties. So mm. I would vote for um, for example, in my constituency, we have the Raven Looney Party. Yeah. We were standing for. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if they're standing in, in, in the other ones, but um, or you can turn up and you can spoil your ballot paper. So if there's not someone you feel you, you don't or you don't have a, a particular choice, um, you can spoil the paper and not particularly vote for anybody. Right. It's like a protest. If you just I mean, as it is it staff or teachers, or you mean as a people or as a staff? You mean to all the teachers? They have a they have a group of union like that. Are you mean you talking that? We have a union. Yeah. Yeah, we have a union. Mm. Yeah, we have a couple of unions that you can join. Oh, right. Okay, the last one. Why do you think it's important to vote? To vote. Why do I think it's important to vote? Because if you don't vote. You can't action change in society. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> died. And people have died. Um, particularly women, women who don't vote um, as well, because of the women that fought very, very hard to get the right for, for women's rights and women's votes. Well, there's one last question. What is the most significant the parties they competed in? Say that again. What is the most they think? What's the most significant they competed the parties? Most significant competition? Yeah. Between which parties? Oh, yeah, parties. Uh, well, at the minute it's Labour and Tory. Uh, I think they're the biggest competition to each other and in politics at the minute. Because whoever gets the majority, and it's a very slim majority, is the person who gets to be Prime Minister in some capacity with a minority government. So they'll have to work along with the Lib Dems or um, the Greens or even Scottish parties. Yeah. But how do you think there's a, they have a great priority items like uh, NHS, transport, immigration, and education? Which which the most important they are? Do you think? Well, as a teacher, I suppose you'd say education, wouldn't you? <laughs> how, how, are they, how are they energy? 
How about the what? Oh, the NHS. The NHS. Yeah. Uh, I don't really know enough about it. Mm. The problem is, it's hard to vote for something when you don't know enough about it. So I could never profess to say this, this or this. Because I'm not there, I'm not in the NHS, I don't work in the NHS, I don't know what it's like to work in the NHS. I've not used the NHS as a service. So I don't really know enough about it to make an, an informed decision. It's, it's probably not an important thing for me. Whereas education, I'm right in, in it, so I can I can pretty much vouch for what it's really like and what should and shouldn't be done in terms of policies. As a staff, what would you advise the parties as education? What would you advise to change the education to a party who win the election? Uh, change the whole system of top-down mm. um, management and surveillance of teachers and allow, and allow students to be, just basically to change the whole system of education to allow students to learn in a different way that's not so um, constrictive. How about the fees at the university? Tuition fees? Yeah. Mm. I don't really know enough about it. Thank you very much. <laughs>